we have our next eminent speaker dr sudhir who has actually probably come the first time in my webinar and somehow got missed each time and uh, he's a senior consultant cataract cornea and refractive surgery and uh, uh, heading the department of preventive ophthalmology and uh, also head of the health informatics and we really know what an immense help is he is for the, the very popular uh, emr uh, systems which they have at chankar netralaya and he is going to tell us how i manage prk hays uh, thank you ma'am for the invitation and uh, for uh, for this uh, presentation uh, am i audible yes yes yeah uh, i'll be talking about the post prk hays which is again a, a problem which we uh, face uh, uh, when we start doing a prk for higher powers so to look at the definition is the loss of corneal clarity after refractive surgery leading to decrease in vision you can also have a myopic regression and irregular astigmatism etopathology and predisposing factors are poorly understood but hays is due to abnormal collagen deposition and decreased corneal refractivity most cases of post prk hays are clinically insignificant and self resolving and incidences of significant prk hays is only 3 to 4% at 6 months so in vitro and uh, in vivo studies focus on modulation of tgf beta pathways inflammation and extracellular matrix remodeling clinically looking at the risk factors high refractive error whenever you are doing more than 6 diopters higher ablation depth greater than 80 microns smaller ablation zone and exposure to uv uh, post uh, uh, prk and uh, it also depends on the methods of epithelial removal if uh, and uh, patient if preoperatively they had a clinical intolerance altered tear break up time had meibomian gland dysfunction and vitamin d levels these are the patients who are predisposed to prk hays uh, uh, the group from narayan netralaya presented uh, the risk scoring system for post prk hays and based on the uh, the various contact lens intolerance tear break up time the gland dropout osdi and vitamin d they graded them into low moderate and high risk and uh, these helps in predicting and controlling these risk factors before the treatment itself and to grade the hays post prk it's very simple to look at uh, uh, the trans uh, trans uh, through the tra uh, the hays uh, whether they able to see the structures behind there is no hays completely clear cornea 0.5% trace hays seen with careful oblique illumination and very severe hays with complete opacification of stroma in the area of the scar and anterior chamber is totally obscured so most commonly we see in in post r case uh, when prk was done uh, patho patho uh, physiology of post prk hays is very simple whenever there is a disruption of basement membrane by laser the central keratocyte apoptosis occurs and the peripheral keratocytes migrate uh, to the center and these transformation of these keratocytes to active uh, weighted fibroblast are responsible for or uh, these uh, converting them into myofibroblast most commonly uh, patho uh, physiologically they have to uh, they get apoptosis but if there is a abnormal then they start secreting irregular ecm proteins and that is responsible for the hays Uh, i'll take you through three cases where how we managed it uh, uh, most uh, this was one of the patient who presented at 36 years with blurring of vision for more than 2 years prk was done elsewhere 6 years ago patient had hyperthyroidism on the right eye patient vision was 6 by 45 whereas in the left eye was 6 by 7.5 uh, refraction was irregular and whereas in the left eye was clear and the patient had good vision Uh, uh on examination we saw a reticular haze in prk almost grade 2 in the right eye there is a res, uh, left eye was normal and uh, there was abnormal topography because of the prk so as we all looked at the uh, various uh, methods of looking at uh, prk haze one need to look at sclerotic scatter or if, uh, or to look at uh, uh, retro illumination uh, that will help us in uh, identifying the area of uh, haze and uh, we can also do it in uh, oct or we can uh, to identify the layer and how much is the haze there so in this we had the management plan was to go ahead with ptk with mitomycin uh, uh, patient uh, we also gave the patient a contact lens trial but with the contact lens the patient improved to 66 and patient wanted to go ahead with contact lens and did not come back for so there is an option of irregular astigmatism and patient were not willing to go for a uh, treatment still we can go ahead with the contact lens and medication with lubricants there was a second patient which also presented who was a 31 year old female who presented to us with blurring of vision for 6 months prk was done 10 months back and in the right eye was 69 whereas the left eye 
the vision was 3 by 60 and you can see the regression of almost minus 4.5 and uh, in the right eye there was a mild moderate reticular haze whereas in the left eye the sub, it was like a honeycomb haze. So again you can use the densitometry to identify the haze and the uh, severity of haze. We can also use it for serious, uh, serially following up uh, whether it is improving or worsening. So in this, we uh, offer the patient to go for a mitomycin C with a PTK. Uh, mitomycin is generally used as a prophylaxis uh, in all cases of PRK. So that it uh, and uh, uh, it's an alkylating agent and delays prevent corneal deposits and induce keratocyte apoptosis. Uh, whereas the PTK removes, as doc uh, Dr. Rupal Shah Madam has uh, had ex uh, clearly explained about the various options of PTK. So when you can combine PTK with mitomycin, which will help in uh, minimizing the uh, completely removing the haze, and also with the mitomycin, you can prevent uh, the recurrence. So it is minimally invasive, safe, effective, and delays recurrence. It avoids in a bad cases like ALTK. So in this case, again, we did a refraction patient's uh, vision with the left eye uh, did improve. Uh, we did a PTK with mitomycin. Uh, again, uh, we did in a stepwise manner. The first shots were about 50 microns. Then we tried up to 40 microns, where the 40 micron shots were uh, split into 20, uh, 20 microns each. So we can actually look and see how much the haze clears up. So based on that, we can increase the number of shots even at the steps of 10 microns. Post, uh, uh, post PTK, this patient had completely, uh, uh, the haze has completely disappeared. So you can see pre-PTK, uh, pre the haze, uh, which was like honeycomb uh, appearance. Post treatment, this was completely cleared and the patient improved vision to 66. So pearls to manage post PRK haze is careful pre-op evaluation, which is very important. Treatment of modifiable risk factors like dry eye, MGD, uh, perfect fitting and comfort of post, uh, post op contact lens, which is crucial for epithelial healing following PRK. Introducing, uh, instructing the patient not to overuse anesthetic drugs because some of the patients to prevent uh, pain, they start using uh, without our knowledge anesthetic drops, cooling the cornea before and after ablation. The most important uh, uh, two cents for me is the mitomycin, which we need to use in all PRK patients. Uh, and we follow the regime of uh, uh, every 10 seconds per diopter correction in patients more than two diopters of refractive error. And uh, uh, to, uh, we have been doing a PRK for almost so many years and the number of cases which we had was almost like four or five. Most of the times the patients are referred from outside. To conclude, haze post-operatively should be graded, documented both subjectively and objectively with Pentacam and OCT. PRK haze of grade less than two requires only observation. For more adva uh, for advanced stages, uh, more aggressive treatment is necessary. MMC can adequately prevent and also treat haze after refractive surgery. PTK with MMC is helpful in advanced cases. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sudhir. Um, maybe these are also cases wherein you could look at. Uh, we have I have no experience on doing a topo guided regularization. Also, if it is feasible, depending on the depth of the scar because of the irregularity which comes up with it. I'm truly not clear uh, on that. Any thoughts? And uh, uh, We have not done uh, uh, irregularity probably. Uh, we didn't have any experience. Mm -hmm. But I think, yes, we can look into it, uh, 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 topo-guided treatment. But I think the first step is the PTK. And if it doesn't clear up, maybe in the second stage, we can look into the topo-guided treatment. Yeah. Thank you very much.